Hi, welcome back to video 62, Staying Healthy and uh, During COVID Epidemic. This is Professor Sunil Vimalawansa from New Jersey, United States. So, we, here we are going to look at uh, the secondary peaks appearing as we speak now during the summer period in some countries and indeed the winter in the southern hemisphere. Does medical care make a difference for the incidence and the prevalence of COVID-19? To control the epidemic, one need to understand the behavior of the virus, biology of the virus, its pattern of spread, immunity, and the active infection in the community on the real-time uh, uh, GPS-based uh, surveillance and the associated risk and susceptibility. With real-time data available, administration can begin relaxing restrictions and stepwise opening up the economy and the country for the public, thus relieving the burden of people and industries in a timely manner at the right time point. However, without community-based population screening and diagnosing using PCR testing, it's impossible to accurately predict the outbreaks and what's happening in the community. So those decisions made in the absence of community testing are just gut feeling and just arbitrary and continue to harm the country's economy and people. Either relaxing or continuation of the restriction. Either way, it's harming the people. Those who are found to be positive via PCR testing indeed should be directed to appropriate facility to prevent infection for others and facilitating their clinical management at the best possible manner. Some countries have adapted to even those of PCR positive to have a strict home quarantine and indeed have shown better results than hospital management and, and definitely better than the ICU death rates had been reported from multiple countries. Children and young adults, while getting the COVID-19 infection themselves, are less likely to have a signs and symptoms. The vast majority of the asymptomatic carriers are indeed children and young adult people because they have a very good immune system, robust immune system, and therefore they will not develop uh, sometimes zero symptoms. However, they can transmit the disease to others, including teachers, parents, grandparents, and older relatives and their neighbors. The risks are depending on the vulnerabilities of the adults and the elders, and they are confronting and the survivability of the virus in the environment. So we discuss about the tropical weather, the warm and humid weather, itself is uh, the negative control for the virus, which is good. Loosening restrictions and opening the economy should be done in a strategic manner, not due to politics or uh, instruction from the government authorities. <coughs> this include the airports, airlines, restaurants, supermarkets, hotels, and the, the last one should be the entertainment industry, especially the movie theaters, where I still continue, it can continue to spread the disease for a long, much longer period. So what are the missed opportunities by administration? For give example from Sri Lanka. In first week of March 2020, we proposed to Sri Lankan government to consider boosting the strategy, uh, immune system in the country is only 21 million residents at a cost of about three million dollars. This is actually the cost of a six to eight hour loss of economy or the in in the as a result of uh, curfews. So this uh, massive program could have achieved within three week period covering entire country at a cost of something like uh, ten rupees per person. This approach would have predicted the vast major, prevented and protected the vast majority of COVID-19 spread with near zero deaths. We consider this approach as an internal body armor, just like uh, the, the military folks wearing external body armor against uh, bullets. People can wear the internal body armor using strengthening their immune system through vitamin D. 
So this is the internal body armor we, our group, is referred to fight against COVID-19. This would have prevented the need for any, I would say, any curfew at, at all and the destruction of the supply chain, livelihood of two-thirds of the adults in the country and ruining the entire economy through curfews. Despite this, it opted, some countries opted to impose military-like curfews and crackdowns to the entire districts to fight against an unknown and unseen enemy. Just a typical military attitude to fight against COVID-19. This is a completely misnomer and uh, absolutely waste of time and harm in the economy. What about the healthcare? Does it have any impact of the prevalence of COVID-19? The unequivocal answer is no. There's no relationship between the healthcare delivery and COVID-19 associated death in any tropical country. I'm not referring to ICU admission, which is an exceptionally small number of uh, patients. It is the sunshine and the warm weather that protecting people and not curfews or hospital. There is up to 64 differences in the number of hospital and ICU bed, whether you look at the per capita, GDP, or the number of doctors per 10,000 population in South Asian country. I'm giving this as an example so you can imagine the discrepancy of the health capacity available, yet the number of reported cases and the deaths per million population basis are not different in these South Asian countries. For example, Bangladesh versus Singapore, there's a 60 plus fold difference between the healthcare facilities. Yet, reported number of cases are not that different per million population basis. So, again, illustrating that healthcare availability and delivery, how sophisticated it is, so how much you spend it, will have a very little bearing on, on community spread, prevalence, and indeed the overall death rates. So irrespective of the what healthcare benchmark used, the reported death rates, in fact, it's calculated as the, the number of deaths divided by the COVID positive cases, expressed as a percentage, are uniformly low and little different between mentioned tropical countries. Even though healthcare facilities are something like 64 different between Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Singapore. Meanwhile, the use of absolute number of deaths propagated by countries like Taiwan, New Zealand, and Sri Lanka to boost their apparent success are indeed misleading and should not be used for global uh, as statistics. This must be reported as a standardized manner to death rate per million population or death rate or against the total number of PCR positive deaths divided by the total number of uh, COVID infected, i.e. PCR positive people in the country. Just isolated description saying that uh, there was only 10 or 50 or 100 deaths in the country is completely misleading and should not be done. In USA, each state utilizing different approaches, at times implementing contradictory policies. It's a large country and governed by 50 different governors on 50 different policies. So it's very difficult to have a coherent policy to manage a pandemic like COVID. Unfortunately, the opposition party used COVID-19 as a political weapon to discredit the current federal administration and scores cheap point towards his November election. These kind of uh, pitiful political agendas should not happen any country, and they should put the country before any politics. With reference to medication, except for hydroxychloroquine, there are no effective specific pharmacological agents or vaccine to prevent COVID-19. The latter is unlikely to emerge any affordable, safe, and effective vaccine for coronaviruses. This is true irrespective of the Western, Eastern, Yunani, or Ayurvedic medical system. None is actually working to control or kill viral uh, COVID-19. 
One exception is the use of high doses of vitamin D in most, is most effective than the, 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 any potential vaccine. So as the careful use of dexamethasone as shown in the recent clinical study in the United Kingdom in critically ill patient with cytokine storm to rescue from their death. Again, there's a big hype uh, and propaganda across the world saying that dexamethasone will save lives and prevent diseases, which is not true. Dexamethasone should be very carefully used only in the severely affected patient with the cytokine stroke to control the excess massively released uh, harmful cytokine appearing into the circulation. Same drug. If you use inappropriately in those with a mild to moderate disease, whether under uh, medical care or self-care, can be dangerous and indeed can make the condition worse by shutting down their innate immune system. So you should not try using uh, dexamethasone or any steroid medication on your own or through your GP or in fact through the general uh, internal medicine because it can actually make the situation worse and expedite death. So the examination should be only used in the, under exceptionally controlled healthcare facilities like in ICU to prevent death in these patients because nothing else is going to work. COVID-19 is not a nighttime disease or under, understand the or obeying curfew that was imposed by the military in many countries. <clears throat> the longer term clinical, social, economical outcomes would have much better in these countries without curfew or countrywide shutdown destroyed their livelihood and economy. It caused more harm and little benefit and I hope that uh, no country will again put curfews or countrywide lockdown forever for this kind of uh, public health uh, pandemic or epidemic simply did that because of lack of understanding of the disease and the knowledge of uh, lack of knowledge on COVID-19 biology. The lower prevalence of COVID-19 and the lower death rates reported in tropical countries are simply because of the logistic and natural reason. Nothing whatsoever to do with draconian measures such as uh, months long 24 hour curfews or any form of healthcare intervention or delivery. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that we can create more important and useful videos for you to enjoy and use them to protect yourself and your family. Till then, thank you very much. And this is Professor Vimalavansa from United States, New Jersey, America. Thank you.